Hello and welcome back to the Make It Mastermind podcast with your host Julian and James. On this week's episode, we're going to be talking about adversity, belief and growth. We've got Danny Dicko Dixon, a professional MMA fighter from the North of Wales, who's here to tell a story for the first time. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the page, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Danny Dixon, 27 years of age, a professional mixed martial artist from Deeside, North Wales. Nice. All right. So tell me how you got into fighting, fighting or MMA or whatever. Just what age did you start? And what age, yeah. This is like uh, quite a long. So like when I was younger, say about 11 years old, I had a break-in with my mum, yeah. So it's quite deep this, yeah. But uh, so we had a break in, and the man who broke into my house, my mum, obviously went to court, took him to court, and everything. She went against him. He got jail for that. I was like eleven years age, and then from jail he sent two people, yeah, back to my house to batter my mum for it. I was only eleven years of age. They broke into my house. I was there, yeah. And you was there when they broke yeah, in. Yeah, man. They come straight past me, and then they've gone upstairs. And I heard like screaming. Ever didn't have a clue what was going on. I was a young kid, you know. Didn't even mm. register my mind what was happening. I think I'm sure they were in Balcarvers or what I can remember. Yeah. And then uh, it was all happening dead fast. They'd gone, then ran back down. I'd ran up, and my mum was just. I remember seeing my mum lay on the bed, and she was like bruises and that on her face and stuff like so. Proper like turned me a bit uh, violent, I'd say. Yeah. Obviously with anger, but mm. I couldn't do anything. Young, weak. You know, I was just a little kid. Mm. My mum was like my queen kind of thing, and just. Had to let that happen, so it got to me a bit, and then uh, from there, I went to like boxing, I walked myself down to a boxing gym. And I used to do football all the time, I used to sneak off from football to do boxing actually. Mm. And then my dad was mad because my dad proper wanted me to be a footballer when I was a kid. So, and then uh, I just walked off from there and I just kept going sneaking off to the boxing gym 11 years old. And my dad kept coming down and watching me, and he was like, Oh, you heard the coach was saying you've got something about you, you know, like footwork fast and everything. And then, my dad wanted actually me to stick with it mm. from football. My brother was a goalie, you know. Even my family aren't like that. They're all dead, like, kind, polite, and everything. And I, but because of that, spot violent into me straight away. But not a bad thing at the time, do you know what I mean? It was just mm. like, obviously, I wanted to, never wanted to not protect her kind of thing, yeah. And then when I grew up, like, 13, this is what I mean, like, 13 years of age, I started, like, uh, sleeping with a knife and everything, like, because I was that scared, like. Fuck, you know, that, yeah, that experience yeah, caused that, all that, of that. that got to me. Like, my mum used to come and fight with me to get a knife off me at night. Yeah, mm. so Because I, I was like, I couldn't let her go through that again. So I used to be sat in there at night time with a knife under my pillow and stuff. like. So it kind of wrecked me. We ended up having to move house because like, it traumatised my mum. So wrecked me a bit as a kid. Mm. To, well, you, you hear a lot of things, especially with young people um, at a young age, having traumatic experiences yeah, and it man. affects them for the rest of their oh, life. Oh, yeah, man. I, I reckon this year... Like, I've started speaking about this year. Obviously, I've been to jail and everything. We can hit on that later on. But this year, I've only started realising why I've been so violent towards, like, people that I didn't need to growing up and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's always been my mindset on that. It's not like, say, if I have a confrontation or something on a night out or something and then it happens. It's just like, say, if I see my mates. I've always been bad for protecting my mates, but it's only because of what happened to my mum. Mm. And I think if I leave my mate there, then will I always have that same doubt as I grow older, you know? Like, am I going to be thinking, oh, I should have looked after him? Because I always still think I should have looked after my mum. Even mm. though I couldn't, there was no possible way. But it hurts me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Almost sounds like you almost felt guilty at that young yeah, age. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. And it, like, hung over my head badly, like, yeah. So, from there then, I just wanted to be something. And then I, I obviously got so much into fighting and become, like, I weren't using it as a violent thing. I actually loved fighting. And it was like, wow, I love this, do you know what I mean? I love all of it. Respect, uh, you know, discipline, everything. It was growing me up as a better person. Mm. In fact, without that, I didn't know where. Like, even with that, you know, I've ended up on some wrong things. Without it, God knows where. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I've I've just avoided the serious amount of bad things through that. Like, you take fighting away, and then like, where would have all that gone? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, if I'm still messing up now and again, like I've I've messed up. Everybody does as a person. I've messed up growing up, but I've learned. I'm in a good place now, and I've got through it. And I just think. I didn't have, like, fighting was always, that was where I went, do you know what I mean? Mm. I'd go there, I'd get back on track, have a fight lined up, that's me focused, do you know what I mean? I'm a good family man there. If I'm in training that for a fight, I'm probably the nicest I ever am, or relaxed, do you know what I mean? I'm with me family, with me friends, and then that's it, focused, yeah. 
Do you know what's, what I've found with most of the fighters? We've had a lot of fighters in the show, and yeah. you won't believe it. Most of them are so respectful people to yeah, say how man. lethal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they can be. Yeah, that's exactly me. That like I'm, I'm calm. You know, you have respect for each other. You literally like I've just been sparring, and you know what I mean. Like some of the UK's best, and you have like hardest rounds of your life, and you just get up and respect you. They beat the hell out of you, and at the end of it, you're just like, yes, that was good. You know I mean? because you're learning, you're growing off mm-hmm. each other. You're, you're trying to get the same goal. It's not about being violent. It's about just getting to the top. You know and like making it for what you like. I want to make it and give my mum back something, do you know what I mean? And give my family back something, or like uh, kids like that have been through stuff like I have, and then they've gone down a violent road and they haven't had the thing that I've had. Mm-hmm. So, say I've got the gym and I've got everything. What if someone's had like been traumatized and they haven't got all of that? So, where do they go? Do you know what I mean? So, I want to try and build something now in my area. Like, I'm a coach as well as a PT now, and I'm only still young. I've got 10 years left of fighting still. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean, I plan on making it, but with with why doing that, I'm still trying to bring, like, I want young generations to come up to me and be like, I've been through it. So I'll say, come speak to me and, you know, we'll get through it together or I'll tell you where you should go. Because I've made the mistakes. If they learn off mine, instead, of, sometimes you won't have to learn off your own. I think a lot of people just let people learn off their mistakes. Well, it could be a wasted life. And mm. if you've got something to tell somebody, like if you've got somebody to say, like, stop there, you know, this way you're going wrong and you can start sorting it, you should be doing that. And that's what my point is trying to get across, you know. Mm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. So, to go back to that uh, that incident, is did it change your pers- your perspective, perception of the world at a young age? Because before then, I guess yeah, like as yeah, a kid, yeah. like your your parents do protect you from yeah, a lot of the yeah, like it, stuff yeah. that's going on around the world. But then that's kind of like not maybe not the real world, but yeah. a fucking horrible side yeah, of the real yeah, world yeah, yeah. Well, forced yeah. upon you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it must have just changed, See, like like warm me up kind of thing. It was like right now, it's time for me to be a man, kind of thing. So early, do you know what I mean? Like, I was thinking, that ain't happening again. Mm. If it happened, if he comes back next week, it ain't happening again, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I was I was a kid, man. I could, probably couldn't have done anything, but I was willing to, do you know? So I just went from there at an early age, and that's why I got into everything. But then, like, sports, nothing to do with that. I'm not violent through sport, do you know what I mean? I'm, if anything, that calms me down. It puts my energy somewhere good, mm. and I'm trying to achieve something good. Like, when I get to the top spot, I don't want to be at the top spot and be like, oh, yeah, I'm doing this because of that breaking. I'm not, it's nothing to do with that. I just, that started my journey. Mm. Now my journey is meaningful. It's for younger generation, you know, like help them when I'm older than that and make them better people. Have like a home for them in Wales, like a family out of a family. Do you know what mm. I mean? So if they've got troubles going and come to us, and we all work through it together. Yeah, that's cool, man. So you put on your, your first pair of gloves when you were 13 then? Uh, you... uh, yeah, I've been in the boxing gym from a young age, yeah. And when did you have first have like a f- amateur fight? I think it was fight, 16 or... first fight, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was in the boxing gym for ages, you know, but I was still like, I was a kid, so I was still football or boxing. Like my, my my whole family did not. Like there's, if you look at my family, none of them are violent. They're all like, it was just me. That was my thing. I had to do that, do you know what I mean? And throughout that span then, do you know when you've got into boxing... You've had that incident at such an early age. Like, did that cause any other trouble in your in, in your life as a kid yeah, growing up? Yeah, that's the thing. What I said, like, uh, always have an issue of thinking I have to get involved if somebody's like, if my mates are in trouble or something because mm. of that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not a violent person. You've seen me yourself on an hour. I just have a buzz, have a laugh. I'm not really fussed about it. But as soon as I see a mate in trouble or something, it's just like, like I don't really like going out and drinking. I don't really agree with it. Obviously, because of the career I've chose, I'm now trying to just push that aside and just focus. And you know, you can't have both of them. You got to do one or the other. Mm-hmm. Have you, you know, enjoy yourself. Have your balance now and again, but mainly put your focus towards where you want to be. But when I'm out and uh, if I see a mate in trouble, it's just like someone switches in me, and it goes. It's not me. It's just straight back to when bang that they broke into mm. the house. John, you know, just thinking that I've got to protect them. I'm not not letting anybody else not get them. I'm like I groom myself to protect people. Mm-hmm. No one ever taught me to calm down. I always say about fighting. You know, uh, when you have a fight. Your crowd goes wild, yeah. You, I think Mike Tyson said it in a podcast. Your crowd goes wild. Everyone congratulates you for beating another man. Who tells you to calm down? Mm. Mm. You never get told to calm down. Never, ever get told. Yeah, chill now. We're going to go on a night out. Relax, you know. You've done your fight. You've mm. had your fight well done. It's just like, boom, f- out. Mm. You know what I mean? Calm down the next morning, maybe. Yeah. But are you known to be, like, your... Your Danny Dixon yeah. MMA fighter. Yeah, yeah, that's to it. everyone else. Yeah, that's that's it, yeah. There's more to you than that, yeah, obviously. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. De- there's obviously deeper levels to you yeah, as a yeah, person, yeah, course, but yeah. the general people are gonna see that. Oh, he's an he's an MMA fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I guess that must have a it must play yeah, a yeah, part yeah, yeah, in yeah. those situations. He, he, people's egos in it as well. Like when they see mm. me out, they're like oh, he's a fighter. To be honest, I aren't the last thing I'd want to fight. The last thing, do you know what I mean? Mm. But I am a fighter, and there you go again. If I if it gets spot, then. 
No one teaches us to calm down. As soon as I know I'm fighting, I go into a warm up stage and then I have a fight. That's all I've ever knew from my young age. Do you know what I mean? So mm. no one says calm down. That's why. That's why I'm trying to learn this year. Like like I said, like I know, like I've been to jail obviously through it. Like I said, that that's that's the thing what we we're getting on to. Sorry, I was uh, always known for looking after my mates, and then it got me into a bit of trouble because obviously I can fight. So if mm. I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna cause damage, which is stupid. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to be doing that, but I've done it. Like, made my mistake and learned from it. That's why I've been like, I shouldn't have got involved there. Like, I just need to stop letting me past affect me and being this person. Mm. Just take a step back and just carry on with my career. But obviously it's happened and uh, I dealt with it. I ended up in jail for four months. I think I wrote a letter to the judge when I was in there actually saying, like, I was just in a pad sat there and I was like, this ain't for me. I was actually on remand, yeah. So I got put in court. It was for having a fight with three lads. There was three of them, and there was only two of us, but it was only me that ended up fighting with my mate. They were trying <laughs> right. to bottle us, yeah, and I actually Fuck. ended up coming out better. So, um, um, you know, automatically from what I did, it looked like I was the violent one, but I wasn't, you know. They were saying mm. they were going to bottle us and everything inside, but it just flipped the switch on me, you know. And then, obviously, we've had the fight, yeah, and then I've been in court, and I was supposed... We, we were like a... It was called like a, a plea of this, and I just went, I'm going guilty, but if I'm going to jail yeah because I was put my hands up I was like if I'm going to jail then you can send me today you know I, I said that to my sister I was like I need to go today mm. and they sent me remanded me do you know you think it's not going to happen and I was like I need to go like I just got remanded so I didn't even have a date when I was coming out or nothing just when got you got up. that news what the, what was that like I your was family in, I was, I was your friends box, I was in the box looked back and my dad was crying like and I was just like I was in a box so I didn't even say bye to my mum or nothing I just went in court thinking it's a you know I'm fighting my case I've had a fight mm. like yeah. you're gonna go home tonight or yeah, whatever, yeah and when I said you know if you're gonna send me to jail I'd rather go today because it was playing on my head that much I weren't sleeping at night I was losing sleep and everything and I know I'm not a bad person mm-hmm. I know that so I'm sleeping with a guilt of a mistake on me like every human makes a mistake and then when uh I was there in the box and I sent that and then they just slammed down and they were like, yeah, he's requested to be remanded. And they just put cuffs on me and just walked me down this little dark hole like at the side of the court. And the next minute I was in a cell, I was like, wow, you know what I mean? And then tell a story, this is even, this is mad, yeah. Like I was in finger yeah, and they got the numbers wrong in jail, listen to this, yeah. And I got told I had cancer in jail. I swear on my family's life. They got a number wrong, yeah. So the wrong Dixon got told he had cancer. So they come to me and said, you, you know, you need to go to a nurse night in the morning. So I was like, wow. What the fuck? Ah, mate, I was blown away. I was crying that night, yeah. Phoned my mum and everything and got in touch with them. And I was like, you know, I think I've got it. Like, I was telling everybody, like, you can ask my family about this and everything. And then I went there the next morning and uh, the, the nurse was there or whatever it was, the, the doctor, what you're saying. They said, uh, that's the wrong number. Like, really apologise. Like, she was nearly crying that saying, you know, it was a mess up in the jail, in the system. It's not you. And I was like, wow. She was like, I was saying, you go, I was in a vest. She was going, you, you, you can't let you die in love. Yeah. That's what they had me down as. I was dying. I was like, wow. God, my mind was blue. And then they said, uh, she goes, what you, when I first went up to her, this is the mad thing. I first went up to her. So I'm in jail, yeah. And uh, obviously, they don't even know your sentence or nothing. And she goes, oh, I love, what's your name? And I went, oh, Danny Dixon. And she goes, mm, got a ring to it. That You're going to be famous, yeah. <laughs> swear down. And I was like, wow. Like, that's what sparked me kind of thing. I was like, why would you say that to somebody random? Joe, you, know, you don't even know the sentence. I could have mm. been in life, you know. But she said that to me, and I was like, "Spot the sentence." And then I had a gym orderly job. I was actually in uh, Old Course in Liverpool, and when we finished, I was working in the gym. And I was supposed to get three years, yeah, and four. Mo- I wrote a letter in the judge and everything. And my next case was three month. And when I got charged, they said you're only serving eight month. No, you're getting eight month. You're serving four. So I had a month left. I was Do like, you know even in those time in the jail, just wind it back a little bit. What? How did you keep your mind going uh, in I, that's those the gym, time? The gym, yeah. I took, I took on the gym, and you know what? Uh, another thing is, most people will tell you this: you have a, a TV in your room, but there's only certain channels, and one of the channels is you can have Bellator on it every week. Right. So every week, I was like, "This is the matter." Another thing, I was watching Cage Fight. I only had one then, as amateur, and I was watching Cage Fight every week MMA. I was thinking, "Bloody hell, do you know what I mean? This is what I want to be." But at the time when I was saying that, I didn't even know my sentence. Mm. I was looking at three years, and then in the end, I only got four months. And I was like, it's, when I got four months, I was just like, this is it. Now I've got a month left. I'm going to smash the gym in here. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get on my grind. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to make this happen. And then when I said to the gym, like another another the screw, sorry, when I was leaving the jail, uh, I was leaving out course, and I said to the gym, I would thank you for everything you've done in that, because I used to train three times a day and then work, just clean up the weights and that. And then he said, oh, yeah, man, he shook me and He goes, next time I see you, it'll be on the telly. I mean, another thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why would he say that? You know, like, or little things were just triggering me, triggering me, like little signs. Maybe, you know, it's not... You know, I, I, I want to know now as a professional, you know, so as much as I believe that took me here, 
if I didn't believe it wouldn't have got me here. I'm here now. Mm. I'm already halfway to where I ever was. Do you know what I mean? That's in the past now. So as much as I say it could happen, it might not. It is. Do you know what I mean? It's happening right now. Mm. I just, all I need to do is just keep showing up and keep doing it. And before you know it, I'm going to be in a spot where I was like, wow, I watched this in jail. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it sounds like even through all this adversity that we've even got into from the, the start of your story, how have you been able to, to keep your like a, a positive outset on life and you know focusing on the things that you want rather than all this shit that you're getting that you don't yeah, want yeah does yeah. that come from your family or where does that honestly i don't know but i'm just so goal driven you know that's that's literally it i just don't switch off from that like if i want something i'm gonna get it i got i left my job i was in cranes my family owned a business prince thomas crane yeah yeah and uh, i left them i went to watch anthony joshua wembley so i was earning like it was about 600 700 pound a week and i was watching them and uh, so any fuck uh, uh it was i think it was paul Lockin. Fuck, yeah, 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 Wembley it was, yeah. So it was like November sometime and I watched it and I was there and I thought, like, this is what I want to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, th- I want to be with all these crowds and that. I was sober there. I actually had a fight coming up, so I was sober, sat there. I watched the whole show sober and there was lads in wreck next to me and I was, like, dismissing it. They were, like, join in, do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I was just with my nephew. Me and my nephew went and and on the train home, I actually said to my sister, I'm leaving work. Like, I was, like, 600 quid a week and... You know, it was a lot of money. I didn't have a job to go to. I went to PT then. I didn't have nothing. I just went, I'm going to go fighting. I'm going to find my way. Like, mm-hmm. I quit work before I even knew what I was going to do. But I knew I can't work and do them both. So I'm going to quit that and then I'll find a job. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then I started, like, teaching and teaching youngsters and everything. And just, so something clicked. It was natural, you know, being in the gym all day. And it's the same now. Like, I, I go to Manchester Top Team in the morning, learn a drill, and then I try and teach it out to the people in North Wales and help them out. And... When I'm doing that, I'm going over the drill in my head as well to be a better fighter, do you know. I want to rep Manchester and I want North Wales to do well as well, do you know. But there's not much come from our area at the minute. I don't think anyone from the North Wales has actually ever been in the UFC. So, you know, if you want to be the best, you've got to train with them. And Manchester's a top team are serious, you know. Mm. That is a team that everyone will know about soon. Yeah. Do you know what? I do want to go back to your sentence, though, because I want to ask, like, do you feel like it was unfair because of your, like, the skills that you have? Because for me, it feels like it is a bit unfair. Like it's just a, it's just a situation that you were put into, and yeah, the fact yeah. that if it was an average person, say, if, yeah. say if I was you, yeah, yeah, I can't fight, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But the res- the result was the same, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I might have got away with it, yeah, yeah because yeah. I'm not trained, trained fighter, yeah. fighter. But should it even be like that? Nah, nah. The, 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 do you feel like? Did you feel it was unfair was at the time? Kind of, because all I thought about is it one way is like if I didn't do what I don't and know how to protect myself, they would have done that to me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it was one other bit. It was just a fight. We all have fights. Like when you're a kid, you have a fight with your prof and that. Do you know what I mean? Nothing comes of it. It's just like boom, the moment. Mm. That's what it was. The moment he beat me. Yeah, you know, I didn't kill somebody. Do you know what I mean? I know you. There's a chance that by. I wasn't trying to do anything like that, do you know what I mean? I just literally protected myself, had a fight, got in a bit of the zone and then got out there. Mm. You know, if I didn't do that, they were doing it to me. It's the same. Like, I still had incidents there. But I think with the judge, uh, obviously it's happened to me a few times. I've been in a bit of trouble growing up. So it is a repeated thing. Yeah, okay. So I wouldn't class myself as innocent. But I would class myself as, you've got to know my story and try and help me. Like, I've had other stuff where I've been like, you know, you just throw me in a cell. The you throw somebody in a cell when they've got they're trying to conquer something. Like I'm trying to fight something and then give back. Do you know what I mean? Like I could speak to kids when I'm older and tell them my story of like how I nearly messed up my life and I literally wanted. To, I could change like serious amounts of kids' lives and stop them from mm. making my mistakes. But the judge could also just go boom, go into a cell and then lock in the cell and never learn anything. Like I've asked for counselling and everything. Do you know what I mean? Heard nothing. Like I, I've only just started speaking about the incident this year. I even asked my mum the other day about something that happened. I thought, like, I had a vision that he tried running me over, yeah, <laughs> on it as a kid. And I was like, I knew everything else. So I just said, Mum, I've just got a brief up on this. I mean, Mum doesn't like to talk about it. She gets proper upset. Like, she moved house and everything away from it. Yeah. And she was like, look, Danny, uh, stop speaking about it because it's driving me mad. And that didn't happen. Mm. And I thought that since I was, I thought that for your life. Like, I've visioned that in my life. That's been in my head that that's happened. That I, I didn't remember that being a dream. Do you know what I mean? A dream goes and comes, doesn't it? Mm. Like, I've had this thing that he's done this to me. And my mum's like, nah, you've just had a bad nightmare about it, Danny. Wow, it's been stuck in me for 10 years. Mm. Yeah. And I've so been sh- so on, I was going to say that, so we've, I think we've mentioned it on the show before with, with other people, but it just feels like to us that prison doesn't actually, re- it's not actually designed to reform people. Nah, it's not designed to nah, help people it? like it should be. Because I, I pay tax and it goes yeah, towards yeah. that. Yeah, and yeah. if you say to me, what do you want prison to be for? I was like, well, yeah, you want it to be protected from dangerous people but you yeah. want people to be fucking reformed yeah you to do. be helped you, you help, yeah. to go back that's into society help, yeah, yeah. 
if you're in a circle and you're messing up all the time, you need help, don't you? Like my 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 thing was this incident when I was younger, do you know, and I always I all I wanted to find out was it. I'm still trying to find out things now, do you know. Mm. There's still probably some mistake that I'll make and I'll be like, Oh bloody, I knew that but you can't stop it, can you? But the more you talk about it, man, these podcasts they're like pro- podcasts are probably better than counselling for you. Genuine. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Here now you're having a chat and it all you're letting it all out and you're telling it and somebody understands you like both yourself. So and important to do that though, yeah, isn't it? So 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 so, yeah. so important to and how like, many do you stories? Even just speak and that's it. You hear how many stories you hear and think, wow, that's ace. And something. How many people are gonna watch this and go, oh, I can relate to that? Mm. So many people will be able to like, especially like it's something that a lot of guys will go through at some point, and yeah, they yeah. can be put like you can like you say you were forced into a situation where I'm gonna be physically hurt, yeah, yeah or yeah. you are, well, and there's not really you know there's no alternative really. No, that's it. Yeah, like I said, I, what I done yeah was never right, and I don't agree with any of it, but I do know there's a reason for it. Mm. So if that's what I'm trying to conquer, the reason, then it doesn't happen again. Mm. Otherwise, I just go, oh, yeah, I've done it, and let's punish him for it. Why don't you stop and make sure it never happens again? Yeah. You know what I mean? Let, let, let's conquer that, like, reason. Get over that, and then let's bring the good out in the person. You know, we're all human, aren't we? We've all got good sides. Let's not just try and take everybody as they are. Yes, there is bad people in this world, but there's also a lot of good that are overseen, overlooked, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> that's how I'd see it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, you're, you're 100%, 100% right to, yeah. to dig into that root of, of why it is, and you're actually, you know, you you've taken a you've taken the first steps yourself by thinking about it, by That's going it, to yeah. try and talk about it, to you know investigate, yeah, yeah. ask for counselling, yeah. all that kind of stuff. That's it, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you, like you're a professional MMA fighter, That's you're it, not yeah. a psychologist. You That's need someone it, yeah. to fucking help you out. So, I, like, like I said, I want to use that. Like, I want to get that to me to get a platform, and literally, it's not about me. Like, I'm generally trying to get a high profile platform here, and then just hit it off to little ones and young ones and even people like my age, myself, and then get them through their scenarios, make them chase their dream. No matter what your dream is, I mean, it doesn't have to be fighting, but everyone comes across problems, don't they? Like mental health like that at the minute, it's really bad, you know, and mm. I've, I've suffered with it loads and I've fought it and I've beat it. So when I message people and check they're okay or make sure everybody's okay, I'm not doing it, you know, just to be who I am. I'm just trying to say like, you know, I've been through it and I've beat it. So I'm going to help you beat it. And I'll have to face it again. Do you know what I mean? That's not going to be the last time I face it. It's not going to be the last time anyone faces it. We all have our scenarios, isn't it? Yeah. And we're, like, we're all a similar age, right? And uh, it comes up all the time is that mental health's a big topic, but then like a subsection of that is obviously male mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. what? what is it to you, like for you, like personally, what is it that you think why guys maybe struggle with that kind of stuff? Probably maybe more than... Maybe more than women. Women yeah, seem yeah. to be a lot better at talking yeah, yeah, about they, stuff than yeah, we are. Yeah, they do. I don't know. It's just like an ego thing, isn't it? Uh, who you are and that, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's that tough mentality, in it. Mm. Like, I think most lads, you know, they want to be that, you know, that tough person. And then they bottle it all up. I've done it myself, do you know what I mean? But sometimes I think it's kind of better fighting it on your own, as much as it is good talking. I know everybody says good talking and that, but not. Uh, you're not always going to have them people around you. Mm. You are going to be in places on your own. So if you try and sort it with everybody all the time, and like it is good to talk, to, to talk get it out, sorry, but if you don't deal with the problem yourself, then you're not dealing with your own problem. You're just passing it on and then letting it out. And mm-hmm. then it's going to come back around to you when you're on your own. It's going to bite you. Deal yeah. with it. You know what I mean? And then go back. People will help you. And people say, you, you. that's why when I speak to somebody, I say, you, you're you better than that. You're stronger than that. I try and put it in their head that they're like this person. It's them, yeah. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? So then they tell themselves. There's no point me telling them all the time. I want them to tell them themselves and then they listen to it and then before you know it, when they're there on their own, it doesn't bother them. It's just like, yeah, no, do you know, I can handle this. And it goes through. Yeah. Do you know what that's, yeah, you're 100% right. So when you're going into, you're talking about mindset and stuff like that. So yeah. what, what's, your, what's your mindset for going into fighting? Because it's, you look like you enjoy it, man. Like, yeah. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you came yeah, in, you've yeah. been sparring. If, I, if someone had been yeah. cracking me all morning, I wouldn't be half as polite and fucking excited to see us as yeah. you were. Yeah. So yeah, what's, what's your mindset like when you when we were talking about I fighting and professional fighting yeah, yeah, specifically? Uh, again, with professional, like uh, I don't think there's been much change for me because I've done it all my life, you know. So fighting's all normal to me. You know, mm. I've been grew up as a kid. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm the world's best or anything like that, but it is natural. Do you know what I mean? And I do love it. And I know on my good day, you know, I'm up there with people, so that's what I'm trying to prove now. Do you know? mm. It's good, like, yeah, I get focused, you know, you go through a lot of things in the thing. There's always, there, there's always, ner- no, no one's not nervous, so. Do you know what I mean? No one's sat in them changing rooms not nervous, I don't care what they say. You know, you get a feeling, you're like, wow, this is it. Man, you, you even get nervous you're having a fight on the schoolyard, don't you? You know what I mean? When you're younger, <laughs> it's like, you go, you go, but, you know what I mean? 
when you're in them change rooms, it go a lot. A lot of things go through your head. Why are you doing it? Do you know what I mean? That's a lot of things. Like my mum's one of them. I always do. I'm gonna do this for my mum. She's had a tough life. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My dreams always have been to send her to abroad to live a life. Do you know what I mean? So before that, I'm like, if I don't win this fight, I ain't sending her. Do you know what I mean? Getting the focus and that's part of it. It's just another person. It's your time. Do you know what I mean? You've got to get through them. If it isn't your time, maybe it's their time. But your time will come if you keep being consistent, you keep showing up. Mm. I know for sure. Yeah. But then, all right. The second follow up question to that is, you know, you putting it onto like another person to give your mum a better life. Fantastic. Obviously, <laughs> does that create even a a higher level of pressure that yeah. you have to deal with? And then, how do you actually manage that pressure? Definitely, I, I agree with that. It does put a lot of pressure on you because obviously you're doing it for a reason. But also, it's just like I always say, the journey is the destination. So it's not. Do you know what I mean? Everything that's happening is already happening. Do you know what I mean? In my head, my mum's already in Spain. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She's already there. It's just a matter of time before I actually put her on the plane and send it. If the vision's there, it's clear as day. Uh, there might be a few bumps along the road. There is in life. Do you know what I mean? Like jail, that was a bump. Mm-hmm. Didn't stop me from getting pro. Do you know what I mean? I come out of jail and went, I'm going to go pro. As much as people could say, oh, I'm pro. Do you know what I mean? I've done it. So I put my mind somewhere and done it, and I'm trying to do it for good. Do you know what I mean? I'm not walking around going, oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm that fire. I'm not bothered about that. I'm bothered about my name. I'm trying to get to a spot and then give back to everybody, do something good for my family, do something good for them, and then sit there when my days are done and just be like, yeah, you know what, I'm happy with that. Mm. Successful career helped a lot of people along the way and be remembered for something, like a legacy in it. You do it for a legacy. Like the money, I said to Elle on the way, yeah, if I could do fighting for free, I would. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if fighting was still on and you didn't have to pay to live, I'd do the thing for free. Do you know what I mean? I love it. Mm. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Nah, that's amazing, man. That's uh, do you know what? That's refreshing as well because you, you like you'll see professional fighters and and they will only talk about money. Yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. only talk nah, about nah. money. Like Conor McGregor, he, at first he didn't. Yeah, to be yeah, fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like yeah. two McGregors you that you can get down with the first one. Yeah, yeah. But this one now, like I don't know, like I don't really fuck with that. It's, yeah, look, look how hungry he was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Coming up, mm. and he was going for everybody because that's what he's right. His mindset was clear. You can't knock him for what he's done for the whole of <laughs> MMA. Like, he put us on the map, do you know what I mean? His rise, put everything on the map, him raised the money and everything. But, again, like you say, he's got to a spot now where it's like, look at Khabib. Khabib's humble as hell, isn't he? You know? Yeah, amazing, he's amazing. seriously, yeah, he's a serious athlete and humble as hell, like, retiring, because that just shows you, if you're retiring after your father died, that he's not bothered about anything but family. You know what I mean? My dad's not here, so I'm not fighting anymore. That's deep. If you look into it like that, you're thinking, mm. bloody hell, he don't want to fight because his family aren't watching. Yeah. So he's not bothered about the average crowd. He's not bothered about you know. Even though he's the best in the world, right? That's it. Yeah, he's the best in the world. He could carry on and earn. He could earn. Think of his next paycheck if he yeah, wanted it. Big. And he's stopping because his dad ain't here. That's family oriented person, Sean. Mm. Doing it for the right reasons. Yeah, there was a, something that got said. I didn't watch the Khabib and uh, Gaethje fight, but something that got said, and I saw it and I read it online, was that he had. Justin Gagey in an armbar and he remembered yeah, he yeah, remembered yeah, yeah. that he's Gagey yeah. said that he his mum and dad were there and he would never 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 tap in front tap, of his yeah. uh, in front of his family out of pride and Khabib remembered that and knew that he would have to break his arm to put him away to finish the fight so he put him into like a fucking triangle yeah, yeah, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong yeah, right yeah. he choked him out rather than break, break his, his arm, arm. Imagine not having yet. that fucking mind. Is your mind is that calm? How you can be that relaxed to do that in a fight? In that moment, he's like fucking you can incredible. have the chance of winning. He risked his chance of winning if he had the armbar. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He could have just given it away there. Mm. You don't know that the triangle's coming in. Do you know what I mean? And he risked it and boom. It's incredible. It's the sickest fucking story. So I mean, and from that, I wanted to say like, how do you go about keeping calm in a, in a situation that is literally fucking chaotic as hell for any other normal person? It, it is like. <laughs> Nature, like second nature to me now, because oh. I've always fought. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. like, what, like, that was just as hard as fighting while I was done. And, you know, our training, I think they make training hard, you know, and you're, you're just used to fighting different people, like fresh person in, fresh person in. And when you come into a fight, you know this lad's going to get tired at the same time. I should, you know, you're both there, you both put the same engine. Yeah. If you make training the hardest possible, then your fighting should be just a little bit easier, you know. Not gonna, never going to be easy. No fight's easy, but it's going to be a little easier than you expected. You're going to go in there confident. As long as you sat in the changing rooms and you're thinking, I've done all I can in this mm. camp. I've done everything. I've given it all. Then you're not going to worry. And McGregor said this thing, doubt only comes in when you're not working. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure if you just sat at home now and you had this podcast and you didn't do for one, say let's see six months, you'd be like, man, we've got to get someone in. Mm. You'd be like, it'd make you twitch in your head a lot, wouldn't it? It'd make you think like, yeah. well, I've got the podcast thing, but I'm not doing nothing with it. Yeah. Like if, you're, if you've got the tools to train and you've got the tools to be a good fighter, but you're not training, 
that person that even ten times worse than you. If he's training, he's gonna catch you up. You know, that mm. only comes in if you're not working. When you're working, you relax. Like you, like you'll smash a couple of podcasts on, you'll be like, yeah, we're flying. No matter yeah. what, you're happy because you're working, aren't you? Yeah, do you know you you're hundred percent right, and I think it's people probably listening that are not into fighting will wonder how how do you actually go about staying consistent? Because it can't be. There must be days you wake up think. Fuck! I've got to go. I've got to go Manchester to top run. team, yeah, yeah, and I've yeah. got to spar six fucking pure killers now. Yeah, and I'm not. Right. And I'm not really fucking right now. I'm feeling fuck like fuck's sake. I don't want to do that. How yeah, do you? Yeah. How do you bring yourself around to be like? Uh, come it, on, let's. Like, all right, just, let's go. It, it is just showing. It's just like initially getting there. Do you know what I mean, once you're there, you're fine. Let's. I think every morning, like you, you, you're you training again. Muhammad Ali said that. Like, you know, his training, he didn't like training. He hated every minute of it. I mean, you don't. You're not supposed to like it. If you're liking it too much, yeah, then obviously it's not hard enough. You know, you should be thinking, bloody hell, it's going to be a tough day, this. But I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my part. And then once you're in the motion, you're going, you're learning. Even if you get beat every day, do you know what I mean? You could get beat all the, like, for three months straight in training. And then when you fight, it's definitely worth getting beat three months on it because it's in there. You're going to see your hand get raised. No one sees what goes on in training. Just keep showing up, and you know that's what I say to the younger generation as well. Like, literally, just show up, just keep going. Do you know what I mean? If you're there five times a week, six times a week, and you're learning with, and you're in a good gym, you're only gonna learn. Do you know what I mean? Just be a sponge as you grow up. Just take everything in, take it in slowly. You know, learn, practice. You know, there's no rush, there's no time set on it or anything. As long as you're there and you're learning, you'll get it one hundred percent. Do you know what? I couldn't agree with you more on that point. I think it applies for pretty much everything. You know, like. You want to become good at football, put the time in, That's go it, do it. Yeah. You want to become good on computers, put the time in, go do it. That's With it, anything yeah. that you do, you need that mindset of, I want to be better than I was yesterday. 100%, yeah. And I think that's something as a country um, in England, you know, a lot of the younger kids fall away from, you know, yeah, especially yeah. with social media, everything yeah, yeah. that's out there, it yeah, takes yeah. a lot of distractions away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, having purpose, like it's something we always talk about on the, perp- on the, on the podcast, it, it, it's so, 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 so important and in, for you, you found your purpose super, yeah, super man, early. That's it, yeah. Purpose. purpose is a key word, isn't it? That's mm. mega, yeah. I agree with that more than anything. That is a mega word, you know. That's it. You just got to find your purpose. If fighting's my purpose, then that's what's going to take me where I want to be. Do you know what I mean? This is my journey. It's just about enjoying it. Like, I know training's hard. Like I said, you're not supposed to enjoy it, but at the same time, you are going to enjoy it because it's your journey. So, like, it's happening. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If I'm in training, then my career's, my life's happening. What I'm planning is happening. If mm. I'm not in training, that's when it's not, it's not going to happen. The fights aren't going to come. I'm not going to, do you know what I mean? I've just got to keep showing up and get there. And like you say, when you find your purpose, that's it. I think everybody should go down the road of that. Everybody gets taught, like my purpose with that, it's not going to be everybody's fighting, but everybody gets rushed into a job when they finish school. Like even, like my parents, if I listen to them half the time, I love my parents a bit, but if I listen to them, I would not be pro. Do you know, because they, they, they'll, they'll, mm. they'll back me the whole way. But I think it's normal for any person. I've seen it with a lot of parents. They just rush you into like a, they want your normal job. They want to see you safe before they go. They want to see you comfy. Mm-hmm. And then they go knowing, you know, you've got a job, you've got a few hints and that, yeah. But you could bypass something that, you know, could give you an ex- un- extraordinary life, do you know what I mean? So I think it's like about trusting your gut and going with it and saying, yo, mum, trust me, I get it. Like Biggie said, small said to his mum or something, do you know what I mean? I'm going to be a rapper. And his mum was like, sure, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and she at him, do you know what I mean? Like, you've just got to, just got to, um, you've got to believe it so much that people do actually think you're crazy. Like, you see all the quotes in that book, it, it's not just about posting that quote it's about actually believing and being sat on your bed being on your own and being comfy do you know what I mean being sat there on your own and going I'm going to make it do you know what I mean or seeing things and be like I'll be there soon yeah. you've got to be like that silly crazy yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point do you know what that's a good point for younger people if they're listening like you say you want to pass on like a uh, knowledge to younger people is that 100%. you can post motivational shit every fucking day yeah, man. Uh, but if you don't do anything it, nah. it means fuck all it means I, literally no, fuck no all jobs that they're, they're, they're boss do you know what I mean I never doubt anybody I always say whatever it is for this but also if you have something you have this talent and you think you can do it man go for it do you know what I mean absolutely go for it don't just sit there thinking oh, I could be because you'll be saying the same thing when you're sat in the pub mm. when you're older just having a pint after work thinking I could have been and it'll sound exactly when you went I could be do you mm. know what I mean? The only difference there is practice. Do you know what I mean? Take could be and could could have been, and stop it there and go practice, and you would have been. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it, literally. Do you know it's a great point, and it's you know you see it a lot with like people they'll say, "Oh, I could have been a pro footballer," but you yeah, weren't. Yeah, yeah. That's and it, yeah. you sound like everyone else that says that's that it, shit. Yeah, yeah and that's it. Yeah. It's it's tired. So imagine, flip it. Imagine you're that person. 
saying it and yeah, yeah, yeah. It. it'd just be yeah. Put your all into oh. something and it literally just put everything into that thing. Like just if you put your focus in someone, surely, Jamie, you know I mean? when you want to learn to drive, yeah, and you're doing all them driving lessons and you know, you want to pass your test, you make sure it happens, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Mm. And we all start off crawling, don't we? Mm. We got we learn to walk, don't we? Do you know what I mean? Everybody's there from a young age or when you put your mind to something it'll happen. I I'm sure you can go back to anything if you want to learn something, do you know what I mean? And you actually put the time in, you learn it. And it's the same with your goals. It's exactly the same procedure. But because they're bigger, they're scarier. So it's not your driving test. Mm. It's like my future, this. That should spark you. Do you know what I mean? That should make you think, I'm going to step it up. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to get my future instead of passing my test. Do you know what I mean? It, you'll, you'll see if everybody wants, they all put their mind to something, they can do it. Do you know what I mean? It's like the gym walking, but the gyms are scary. Then you get a routine in the gym, and then before you know it, you're getting a good shape, and you're like, oh, this is actually quite easy. So is your goals, if you work towards them. Mm-hmm. It, uh, trying is almost like the hardest thing isn't it? Like, is it, so yeah. people are living in their heads yeah. is like fear 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 I don't want to do it I'm going to look bad yeah like and then when you actually go out and do it it's, yeah, yeah, that's it's not it. that bad yeah. nah it's not nothing's that bad yeah mm. so I wanted to ask you then in terms of getting yourself into a routine, routine. What, do, what does like your routine look like on the morning so are you up early are you training what, yeah I actually have to travel what does a normal day like, look like I'm from North Wales so I travel to Manchester now. Obviously, I've just recently joined them, say six to eight months ago. I've focused on that now. I, I, like I say, if you want to be the best, you want to mix with the best, and they are the best for me. If they're quite a fairly new gym as well. You know, they've all founded from other gyms. Uh, our head coach is unreal, like all of them, Lofty, Aaron Wilkinson, Carl Prince. They're genius, like you know. So I just want to go there and mix it with them, and I think I can really like. I've had fights where I've had no coaches. I flew to Malta on my own and just lost on points without a corner man. You know, literally on two weeks' notice. And had nobody in box. So what you were sat in the corner by yourself yeah, on yeah, the yeah, bridge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, went over there. Yeah, I, I missed weight once. You know, I had a muffin on the airplane. Went over. I had people shouting at me. I'm Maltese. Tell me, I didn't even know what they're saying. I had to weigh in naked with a flag in front of me and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, what yeah. was that? Do you know what? Take us through that. What, what What's your mind going through? You're by yourself. You're in a foreign country. You're supposed to. You're fighting this guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you don't even know what the what people are horrible, saying to you. Horrible. It wasn't enjoyable. Like when I was over there, I was like, Phew. but again, I love fighting that much. I want to prove myself. Like I. Like I say, yeah, I believe like I can be one of the best in the world, generally, with the right guiding. And I didn't have the right guiding, and I think I just want to show what I can do now mm. with a bit of heart, like get up and show them, like, you know what I mean? Speak for yourself, stand up for yourself and have a go. And if I can show that level with nobody backing me, somebody back me, yeah, and let's, let's go through it, you know what I mean? And, I, and you'll get me somewhere. And I think with Manchester Top Team, that's the best place I'll be. You know, I do want to say, I think I will get for all of these time. I'm learning every day, like you literally... Every session, you go out with something. I always say when I'm teaching people, it's the same thing. Uh, if I'm teaching people, I don't want them to leave just knackered. I don't want them to leave and walk out just sweating and go, bloody hell, I'm shattered. Like if you sent somebody for a 10-mile run, they would be shattered. I want them to walk out and be like, I learned something. Like even if it's one little thing, mm. like, yeah, I know that now. And they take one little thing each session. Do you know what I mean? And then keep practicing it and practicing it. It goes over their head. So a little, like 1% better each time, each day. So if anybody can make anybody tired, can't they? Mm, anybody. Yeah. That is, yeah, you're 100% right. You're 100% right. I want them to guide it on their own. So say, like, if I was teaching them in gym and it was to do with weights or, like, sprints or something, I'd give them a little circuit and I won't say, you've got to do that with me every time I'll give it them. And I'll be like, you know that now. You can do that on your own if you want, do you know what I mean? And then the next session, we'll learn something else. Mm. And then you're getting what you pay for, you know, because you're actually becoming a stronger person. And eventually, then you can pass all that back. But if you're so tied to somebody telling you this is the way or... Do you know what I mean? Then uh, we're all fighters. If we all fought the same, there'd never be a winner. Do you know what I mean? You... Scott, we always talk about this with, with PTs, though. With when you're going to see a PT, you want someone that's going to work you, that you're going to learn something. And when you walk out the door, your knowledge of what you're doing, you can apply that when they're not there. That's with you. it. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you want. Really. That's what that, that's yeah. exactly what you want. I think that's what people should pay for, but they don't realize it. A lot of people are just giving them money out and they just want to work out and they'll be like, "Yeah, I'm knackered. Get in the car. Like, wow, goose. Do you know what I mean? That's they smash me there. But honestly, you hoover the house for an hour and you're tired. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not going to do nothing to your shape. Do you know what I mean? That's how I see things. You want to learn each time. Yeah, you're right, man. I've got um, I've got a little question though. It's, yeah, go back to when you're growing up and maybe making mistakes or whatever, right? I'm assuming you had a circle of friends around you. I'm assuming that's yeah, changed yeah, over yeah. time, yeah. right? Did that lead you to go and find Manchester top team to find the best group of people to be around? Is it? Did you learn by? You see what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah. You learn like, oh, I need the right people around me, it's or maybe they're not story. right, so this I need is, to. This is something else. Like, so uh, I don't want to like you know do anybody else on this 
but I, my last gym, yeah, I'm not even going to name him because I'm not that person. I wish him well, but my last gym actually sacked me for fighting on the street. So, yeah, they they, they, they kind of give up on me in a tough time. Yeah, and I know I've made a few mistakes in my life, mm. but they know I'm not a bad person. If they're listening, they'll know that. Yeah, I'm not a bad person. I mean, no well. And I've done a lot for the gym, a lot, and they know that themselves. They actually give up on me. That was, I worked there. I fought for them. That was my life. Yeah. So this was only, say, a year ago, year and a half ago, yeah. I was crying my eyes out, like I went low. I didn't leave my bedroom for like four days. It's another part of it, yeah. And it was because of the mistake what happened when I was growing up, do you know what I mean? Mm. It was still that thing I was trying to work out. If anything, a coach should help you, yeah. So all of that, my head was just blown, like totally. I was totally mind blown with it. And, you know, I was gutted and I was lost. And I thought, what the hell am I going to do here? Like my fighting, you know. And then next minute, I like just switched and thought, I've got to do this. You know, there's more gyms than one. I've got to work towards it. And then I found, you know, I messaged Carl Prince, asked him, and he's clashed. You know what I mean? He understands me, wished me well. He said, everybody's normal. They make mistakes. Mm. Get in the gym and start working. Now I'm with them. Then I ended up PT. And I actually had, yeah, five clients at my old, uh, bloody woman here. Yeah. Five, <laughs> five clients, especially straight after swallowing. Uh, five clients at my old gym. And I used to think I was living it good then, do you know what I mean? So I had five clients and I had this gym and it was only a kickboxing gym. And I thought I was going for, in reality, looking back now, I wasn't. Mm. I generally wasn't. That's no disrespect to them. I wasn't. But in my head, I was because I was still this person. I want to be the best. Now I'm in Manchester top team. I know what I can do. Do you know what I mean? I know where I can go. I've actually got 32 clients at my new gym. I was, last year, I was crying in bed four days. My Everything happens for a reason. Everything. Like, if that doesn't show you it does, then I don't know what. I was comfy. I wasn't going anywhere. If he didn't drop me, I would never have found a top team. If he didn't drop me, I'd have probably never hit 30 clients. It's mad. It's honestly. crazy how the world works, doesn't it? Like that, you'd think that was an L there that so you took. Oh, mate, but honestly, then you've got a big present that's come out of this. My mum used to go mad at me. She was like, "You need to get out of bed, and that you can't keep doing this." Like, and I was, a go- I'm a strong person, but I was just at the, the bedtime was trying to. Uh, this is what I mean. Another thing about being positive in bed, I was just trying to think, "Oh, what is this trying to tell me? Where is this trying to take me? It's not giving me up. I can't give up." Do you know what I mean? That's not an option. So, what is this guiding me to? Do you know what I mean? It's something else, and let's realize it. And I took things day by day then, and I just planned and planned. Why? While I was in bed, I didn't just sit there, you know, or, you know, I cried, I got upset. I even told my sister, like, I felt worthless at one point. My sister come in, she was sitting on my bed, I was crying my eyes out. She's a lot older than me, do you know what I mean? And I was like, I felt worthless. And she was like, you know, it's not that. You'll get there and that, and you've just got to put your focus to something. You'll find your way. You, there's another door. One door shuts, another door opens. And, man, honestly, I'm in the best place I've ever been in now. The best place. And I was in the worst place a year ago. But that's the difference, I mean. But if he didn't sack me, I'd have still been living that life thinking I'm doing well. But I wouldn't have been reaching my full potential. I'd have actually probably not ever reached my full potential. Mm. That was probably one of the best things that's happened to me. And that's why I'm not going against it, because I'd never go against them and say, oh, yeah, I hate you for what you've done, nothing. I don't. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, it's very fucking mad how it works. It actually is. I was sat there listening to it, like, yeah, do you know what? It's, it's all right. But it away, mate, it's, it's amazing that how you can, you know, or... Yeah, there's times when you're maybe a bit emotional and, and you were upset, but you also have that like uh, ability to be able to kind of zoom out from the situation and say, all right, come on, Danny, find the fucking, find the positive. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, what, yeah. What, what's the lesson? Mm-hmm. What's the, it's fucking mature of you, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, to be fair, is, yeah. to be able to do that. It's not a lot yeah, of people yeah. can do it. No, no, most people, well, yeah, most people. Most sh- people are just down, have a yeah. big pity party yeah, yeah, and then yeah, they've yeah. been in a room for 12 fucking days. Yeah. Never, and and it wouldn't be fight doing what yeah, you're doing yeah, now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's so having that, that resilience is fucking incredible. That's what I'm trying to teach as well as like, because I've been through it. I'm trying to say like, mm. you're gonna. Some people are gonna go through that. I can help you with that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Instead of just going, yeah, I've done it. Do you know, I'm the man. It's not that. I'm glad I went through it. Now I want to try and give it to somebody else and say, you can do it. You can do it. And if we all just do that, to, if you know, if there's ten people doing that in the world, there's gonna be about fifty people getting free things at a time. Mm. I mean. Passing yeah. it on, passing knowledge on, that's all you got to do. No one gets out of here alive at the end of the day. No one's perfect, and we all make mistakes. A lot of people are hypocrites. They do the same stuff, and then they'll have a go at somebody for doing something. Do you know what I mean? Someone will do one crime, and then they'll have a go at someone else for doing another. Mm. You can make the crime, you can make the crime. Do you know what I mean? Let's be real. Yeah. Now, but, that's one thing I really like, actually, with how transparent you've been, you know, and how you look at yourself. Yeah. And, you know, holding your hands up for the things that you're accountable oh, for and yeah. move on with it. You don't, yeah, you don't need it. to stare that's at it, it forever. Yeah. It's no, done. No, no. What's, ne- what's next? That's it, yeah. That's it. Once I get to the top of that, that's my goal, do you know what I mean? And I do believe I'll get there. And when I do, even, you know, half the way, I'm going to be, like, you know, speaking out to people and, you know, getting people there, like I say, like things like this. And 
helping people where I can and be it's, I want the story out there. It's I, I told the good one ever then no story without struggle. There mm. is no story without struggle. There is no story. Look at Floyd Mayweather, fifty and Yeah. His struggle isn't major, yeah. Well he hasn't spoke about it. If he has got loads going on, he hasn't really spoke up. Tyson Fury, yeah, the, on the other hand, yeah, is half or, you know, whatever, and look at that for the story. Man, he's big and everybody loves him. I yeah. love him, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because of what he's been through and he's overcome. It's not the fact he's won so many boxing matches. We don't sit back and go, yeah, he's an ace guy him because he batters everybody. That's not the point. Yeah. We go, he's an ace guy because he's, he's using that talent, what he's got, and telling his story. Do you know what I mean? He's using it as a platform to give off people, keep going, keep going. He'll get up and give you motivation. And that's what I think is real. And that's what I want to get to. That's the point I want to get to. I don't want to be just the best fighter in the world. Do you know what I mean? I want to make. I want to show my purpose and make a difference in the world a bit, just a little bit. It doesn't matter how much. And I think if everybody does that, if everybody makes a little bit, there'll be a big difference, won't there? Yeah. Like small oh, victories yeah. daily. If you when you're training, if you have small victories daily, it equals up to big success. Small changes equal up to big success from a variety of people. Yeah, do you know what, man? After just sitting here and listening to you, like it's it, it's nice to see that you just see it as a journey. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe. Like right now, your purpose is to fight. Yeah, in yeah. fifteen years, you might be like, "Fucking hell, my real purpose was to help kids yeah, not make the mistakes yeah, I yeah, made." Do yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? And yeah. you, you know that it's a fluid process. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's fucking cool to hear is that people always get a bit rigid and say, "Oh, once I'm," you might say, "Once I'm UFC champion, yeah, yeah. I'm done." But then you'd get there, and then that's exactly what happened to Tyson yeah, Fury. Yeah. He had yeah. like a that's where he yeah, kind of yeah. spiraled, and he's yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, I'm at the top now." Yeah, yeah. Ah shit! Is that it? Yeah, there's no yeah, one. Yeah, there's no, literally no, nothing above no, me no, now, no. in this in yeah, this yeah. lane that I was focusing on. The the top to me is a message to get across. If I once I get to a good platform, I'm happy, and as long as the message is getting out, that's it. I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? It's not like a title or anything. I'm gonna get titles along the way. They're they're all the plan. But if I'm giving a message off along the way, and I start seeing that work, and I'm already doing it. Do you know what I mean? I'm successful. Mm. That's success to me. Mm. Seeing a change of people and helping them. That that is the successful point. Not a title or not a thingy, do you know what I mean? But we all have goals and they are my goals and you know I know I can get there. But along the way I do want to try and make a difference because I've been through so much and I'm not a judgmental person. I won't judge people. Like again I say, I've been sacked and I'm still thanking him. I'm not going. You know, I hate him. Or I hate the gym. Jim's boss. I hope the gym does well. I hope everybody in it does well. Mm. Personally, I'm thankful for what happened to me. Do you know what I mean? I'll never ever judge. I'm not going to start judging people because I'm not perfect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not a perfect person. I've made loads of mistakes, yeah? There's been times where I've been an idiot. Do you know what I mean? I've been deserved to be called an idiot. But if you can't admit that, then you're not going down the wrong road, are you? You've got to realise where you're going wrong. And I think some people, they, they, they believe they're not going wrong. Do you know what I mean? That's the only thing. And you don't want to judge them. You just want to say, look, we're all not perfect. But some people, it just doesn't get in their head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They're just so set on their ways. It's mm-hmm. like, that or nothing, but like I said, people to commit crime and then they'll judge you for you committing your crime. It's all the same stuff. Do you know what I mean? You just you've messed up, I've messed up. Let's let's learn from it. Let's grow. You crack on with what you're doing. I wish you well. That's it, literally. Do you think people just? I don't know. I, I feel like it's probably more to do with social media because everything's like it's given to us so quickly. Like yeah, it, yeah. visually, yeah, yeah. it looks like everything happens so fast. Yeah, and nah. you judge people like this. You're like, yeah. oh, that guy. Oh, he's yeah, he's a prick. He's yeah, a, he's yeah. got that haircut. He must be. A, yeah, he yeah, must be a yeah, wanker, yeah, right? Yeah. So, do you feel like, like, obviously, this is the most, we know you, right? Yeah, but yeah. we don't know you like we know you after yeah. sitting with you like this yeah, for yeah. an hour or whatever yeah, we've yeah. been doing. Um, but do you feel like people judge you and does it frustrate you yeah, because 100%. of the, maybe the way you look or that you're an MMA fighter? Because I know, yeah. like, if I said to, or, uh, like, my gra- like, I'll take my grandma, it's not really true, but just an example, like, oh, if I said, oh, my mate's an MMA fighter, she might be like, oh, that's a bit dangerous. Be or, do you yeah, be yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, yeah but yeah. come on, like, yeah, yeah, get to know mean. them. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Does it does it frustrate? It must fucking frustrate you. It, it does and it doesn't. It's kind of like a switch. You kind of know now. Do you know what I mean? Everybody is not going to love you and everybody's not going to hate you. You're going to get haters. I think if you don't have haters, you're not actually doing it right because, you know, that kicks in from like, oh, it's just, they're pissed off because they come from the same place as you. Mm. They can do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody what I grew up with can do what I'm doing. Just put your mind to it and put in the practice. I've done that. Just respect that fact, innit? Mm-hmm. I've actually taken myself off and done it. I say a, a, a same with going to jail. A newspaper wrote about me. The same newspaper wrote about me when I got inv- I got invited to Buckingham Palace for doing all the charity work I'd done. And they were bigging me up saying, like, I, yeah, I'm... Can supposed- we talk about that? What, what, what yeah, was that? Yeah, uh, just all, I've done, like, 20 different charities. so And I think I've raised over nearly a grand a time. So, like, 20 grand in total. And then uh, I got requested for Buckingham Palace, so a garden party. 
Oh. Yeah. I was actually mad because I was actually on probation at the time. So after jail, I was on one more wind down time. Mm. So I got to see somebody and I was on probation. I was getting invited to the Queen's Garden. So this is somebody <laughs> who's just been from jail. <laughs> supposed to be a bad guy. But the Queen, do you know what I mean? It's mad. So, uh, but that, that's what I'm trying to get across. Nobody's going to love you. The same people that wrote about me about going jail wrote about me about, they didn't say I turned my life around, but they were bigging me up for going to, oh yeah, he's going, this, this fight is going to Buckingham Palace. Mm. But make your mind up, what am I? Am I that bad person you wrote about? Or am I the good one you wrote about? Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, 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 no one's going to love you all the time. No one's going to hate you all the time. And people like you, you'll, you'll hear your story. Like most people who've listened to this, they won't have a clue what's gone on. They'll be like, oh, that's a bit deeper than I thought. They'll have a clearer understanding. Mm-hmm. I won't say, use that for me. I'm not one of them people. I won't say, listen to this and be like, oh, yeah, he's a good person. I'm going to say, how you looked at me today, look at everybody. You heard my story and changed your views on me. Do it to somebody else. Mm. And it, you know what I mean? Look at 10 different people now and be like, wow, do you know what I mean? Maybe they're, if they got on a podcast, I'd understand them. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Instead of just taking it off on me and changing your views on me, I think people are only focused on what they see. Yeah. Do you know, hundred um, percent. That's like one of the big things I've learned from this podcast is you can't judge people how can you, no. for what they look or who they are, where no, they're from. No, like no, you no, don't no, know no, no, their story. Everybody's going through something, aren't they? Yeah. And nobody gets out of being alive. So that's so I'll help each other get back and wish each other well and do well. Do you know what I mean? And if you get along, help them. If you see someone in trouble, help them. It's little simple things in it. Do you know what, man? It's it's been a fucking sick episode. It's been fucking sick. We have not podcast for a while. Yeah, man. And this is the fucking. The, the, been looking like, for this. This has been stuff like main. this is why I fucking love to do yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Honestly, course, so thanks course. for thanks for taking a, like you took a big fucking drive, obviously to get here. Ah, boys, thank we, you as well. We obviously really, like I, really appreciate it. Like I said, with the change thing, yeah. If people didn't look on my output today, yeah, to change, like, instead, like I said to you, if they look at me and they look at somebody else like that, that w- that wouldn't have been able to do it without used to either. Do you know what I mean? So mm. thank you, boys. Nice no, one, man. anytime, man. Any, any time. As we're closing, then, so obviously COVID's here. Uh, it's been tough to obviously probably get out and fight. Yeah, but how, how's the the schedule looking for that? Uh, I'm hoping, hoping some news before the end of the year. I did ask my coach for the end of the year. It's not promising yet. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're still waiting. It mm. shows really more than anything. I'm ready. Do you know what I mean, stay ready. I'll be ready. So when the time comes, I'm uh, as long as I'm like I said, showing up and I'm there. If I get the call, I'm ready. I'm I'm in a camp all the time. It's lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? I'll just twitch it up a notch. Mm. So as long as I'm staying in that, then I'm good. I mean, I'm not going out on the weekends. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm training every week about bloody 14 times a week in total. So you know, I'm traveling to Manchester to train and then coming back and then doing eight hours of PTs and then doing my last session. And my day rounds up to like 14 hours and it's in a gym. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I spend more time in the gym, whether what gym it is, with my family. You know, my girlfriend, she's patient. She has a time, she'll wear, like, she'll come home and I'll have food ready at nine o'clock at night. And I've been out since eight in the morning, I haven't seen her. But she wants me to get my goals as well, so. Do you know, that's such an even an important point, man, but. Mm. Yeah, the people around you, that, that, that's what you need. That is what you need, good people around you. You can get through anything with good people around you. Anything, literally. As long as you've got a good team around you, and they, they, you know, you could be on the street, but your mate could pick you up and go, come on, get in my place for a bit, look for a new place, let's start sorting you out, do you know what I mean? Mm. And then before you know it, you do. Because you're like, he's believed in me. I've got to believe in myself. And that's how you get it. Everybody around you, that, that's where you... I, I seen a good one the other day. It said, show me your friends. I'll show you my future. I'll show you your future. Mm. I was like, wow, that's pretty good. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't get caught up in the act. Your friends, if they're into drugs or they're into partying or they're into all that, yeah, if you love them that much, go back to them when you've done your thing. Go do your thing and then go back to them. And even help them then. Mm. Be like, you know what? Look, I, I've gone and done this now. I want to show you who's going to do it because I'm only from where you're from. I've only done what you've done. And you can actually inspire them then. Or you can stay in the circle and just be with them and believe that's the best circle. Or you can just go out and go, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for my old home. I want to do it for the street. I grew up in and everything. Do you know what I mean? When I get there, I want to be like, everybody can do it. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what area you're from. I'm from a place where nobody really makes it. Nobody does 100%. I don't know anybody that has from my area. Big re- reality. That could either tell me. Yeah, nobody makes it round here. Or I'm gonna be the fucking first one and then show people. Do you know what I mean? Sorry about swearing. I'm no, gonna be the no, first. Right. I'm gonna be the first one and uh, show them that they can do it. And then I spark it. And then guess what? You have five more people to make it. But would that have happened if the chain didn't get broke? It's the family as well. Like if so, some people come from a family, no family's done this, no family's done that, so they get it in their head. Oh my, fa- my family hasn't achieved great things, so I can't do it. Be the first one then and take your family with you. Do you know that's a big message for today? Yeah. Believing in yourself. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, I got that tattooed on me after uh, jail. Yeah, 
So when I come out, I've got to leave because everything that I went through in that time, I thought, and all the little messages, I thought, do you know what they mean and something here? So I got that tattoo just to remind me all the time, do you know what I mean? Believe no matter what. Everything happens for a reason. Boom. Well, Danny, it's been a pleasure to have you on. If people want to follow you, they want to find out more about you, um, where can they go for that? Uh, Instagram, uh, dicko underscore 93 is my Instagram. Danny Dixon, Facebook, you know, on there. And like I said, if anybody's going through things as well and they want to drop me a message, I'll also help them. Do you know what I mean? Unfollowers or whatever, yeah, I will help anybody I can. So if they do want to drop down or they've got questions, pop up and I'll help as much as I can. Boom. Boom. Nice. End of part one and we'll call this part yeah, one, man. Yeah, that man. was fucking sick. Thank yeah, you. Yeah,